My name is Avery and my husband is Silas and my daughter is Mila. We're about to have our next one, um, a little baby girl. We've been coming to Foundations for about six years. I grew up in a super loving, a rambunctious family. My mom had my sister and then three years later she was told she was going to have one giant boy uh, and six months into that pregnancy she found out she's having two girls. So my twin sister and I uh, were born three years after my sister um, and then my brother a year later my mom cried but then she got happy again because she has uh, a boy finally. So there's four of us under five and we just grew up in such a fun, exciting family. We call ourselves the Schoenwald Scouts and uh, we would just go on so many adventures together and we, we were just all the best friends. We had such a great childhood. Uh, my mom and dad loved each other very much. My dad ran the uh, Sunday school department at our church and just was a guy who wore a lot of hats um, but meant a lot to a lot of people. One spring break, we were taking a trip and we often would go skiing together over spring break. And so it was the same that we had done several years in a row. We all hopped in the car um, late one night and my parents were gonna drive through the night to Colorado where we would um, go skiing the next day. And my dad was driving down I-70, that long stretch of highway. And uh, early in the morning, uh, around 6 a.m., he was coming up over a hill and there was a truck that was pulling a trailer that didn't have its taillights on. And as we went over the top, my dad didn't see it and, and hit that trailer. That impact sent us spinning across the intersection um, where we ran into oncoming traffic and uh, got hit by a semi. I have spots of memories from that. I remember looking out the side of the van feeling the, the weight of, of the sounds and the feelings of this isn't right, there's something, there's something terribly wrong. So I started calling out the names of my family members to make sure that everybody was okay. Um, and my twin, she responded, but she was the only one who was conscious enough to, to start talking to me. Very soon we had some people stop and, and help us out and call an ambulance and they sent some helicopters. I woke up the next day in a hospital, completely alone, completely broken, and nobody was allowed to tell me anything. And it was for sure the darkest, most helpless moments of my life. Eventually they were able to tell me that my uh, mom was alive and that they were going to transfer me over to the hospital that she was in. So they wheeled me into that hospital room where I got to see my mom. It was joyous to get to see my mom again, but she also then told me that I had lost my brother and my sister and my dad, and that my twin and I were the only ones alive and that we, um, that we, were, that we were the family that we had from that moment on. There was a long period of learning what that new life looks like and learning a lot about the God that I serve. You go through times where you question the Lord's goodness and you question His sovereignty. One of the biggest takeaways is that God's goodness and His sovereignty is not attached at all to our feelings. And when I am walking through that time period of not feeling the goodness of God and not feeling the joy of the Lord, that those qualities are still who God is. One song that really meant a lot to our family during the time after the accident is by Babby Mason. It's called Trust His Heart. It goes that God is too wise to be mistaken and God is too good to be unkind. But when you don't understand and when you can't see His plan and when you can't trace His hand to trust His heart. And in darkest moments, that's what you are going to have to do is to trust his heart, trust what you know is true and declare those truths before your body and your mind and your heart may actually feel those to be true.